All right, and we're live. Hey, everybody. Is this episode 21, David? 21. Welcome to episode 21 of I'd Rather Be Motivated. Tonight, I'd Rather Be Motivated has its first adult beverage. Um, no, but uh, just kind of catching up with David. This is our weekly art check-in show where we get together to kind of keep accountability with each other, um, discuss things that are on our mind, and uh, then see what you guys are up to in the chats. And uh just hang out for a bit and do do a little bit of art and drawing. So um, I hope you all got your sketchbooks and your pens because that's what we're doing. And uh, Mr. David Fleming, when you're not here on uh, I'd Rather Be Drawing's channel here on YouTube, where can we find you? Yeah, when you're not here, you guys can find me on Instagram at Art of Mr. Fleming or on Facebook at Mr. David Fleming. Two best places to find me if I were to um, take your fingers and make you type things in. How about you, Scott? He does that a lot. He uses my fingers to type things. It's weird. Um, but yeah, when I'm not here, best place to kind of keep up um, is on Instagram. And my handle there is Mr. Green Draws. That's M-R dot Green Draws. I know it's pretty tough to remember, isn't it? Uh, but that's where um, I'm most active when I'm not here. I'm just kind of, I keep looking over here. I'm getting oh, lo logged on and turned down. Hey, we've got some people in the chat waiting for us. Got Ronnie and Ace and Mr. Fleming there. Hey, what's up? So, yeah, good to see you guys. Looks like Ace is trying to steal the spotlight here. He's, like, self-promoting in, in the chat. Oh, <laughs> That's always okay. The Comic Den, you guys really should check out his uh, show. If you like comic books, you're definitely going to like his podcast, so check it out for sure. And Ronnie Gunter, what's up, man? Um, do a search on Ronnie Gunter and also look up the sagas of Starsville, um, the journey home, right? I think. Um, but yeah, look up the sagas of Starsville with Ronnie Gunter. Um, he's got a new, uh, digital book out. So check those guys out. Nice to see you guys. <clears throat> and yeah, it worked out for Ace that we're not punctual. So <laughs> I'm glad it worked out for you, man. <laughs> Yeah. My slow computer. We were we were doing that on purpose. We we were just waiting for him. We knew he needed some time. I know. It had nothing to do with technology. Not many like YouTube show hosts would do that, you know. Postpone yeah. their show just to wait for you guys, but that's how we do it here because we love you. <laughs> we'll just keep saying that. There you go. There you go. Um. So, David, how have things been? Oh man, things have been uh, great. So, um. Let's uh, we'll just jump right into our uh, three peas here. The pea soup. Let's do it. Um, What's been your progress? Since yes. Last time we talk. Whew. Let me tell you, Scott. Progress. Um, I've got one page, I think, left in my eleven-page preview to like letter and build my speech bubbles for, and then. Um, I have to go through the process of sending it to a couple of different people. One of them will actually probably be you. I don't. I haven't. I, not, I haven't actually told you that yet, but you'll be getting a copy of it probably late this this week coming up here. Cool. Um, Thanks. My wife is my editor. She knows nothing about comics, but she knows a lot about writing well, <laughs> which I am. There's. I have glaring grammatic things that I just have been trying to fix for a long time that I, you just sometimes those habits just die hard, you know? Well, and, uh, the best of us need an edit, like not me I'm saying, but like the best of people who are good at that and making comics and making books still need people looking over their shoulder to make sure that all that stuff's tight because it's really easy to overlook for anybody. Yeah, exactly. So um, she'll be my, my sort of actual grammar editor, and then um, I'll give it to you and a couple other dudes that I know who kind of be my content editor. Because she knows, like, she has like, she could care less about a sci fi fun story about robots, but she, she's like really good at voice and tense and that kind of editing stuff that I'll definitely need someone to give the look at. So um, yeah, I'm really, ho uh, my goal is that uh, January 1st, we're, we'll do a special edition of the. Um, the newsletter that will contain a PDF preview of those of those pages for everyone to kind of get stoked so that in March when everything's go live, you've kind of already seen a little piece of the book. So um, that's been a bit of a journey for me. Um, uh, I lettered before, but the last time that I lettered, I lettered completely in Photoshop. So um, I mean, I just I know Photoshop so well now that I'm super comfortable just like messing around with that kind of stuff. But um, 
the last thing that I edited in was, or made was the Boy in the Bike comic, which was almost two years ago now. And even before that, like I, I've only ever really made comics that have very like lots of narration. And I mean, it's kind of how I write. Um, so um, this was the first time of me having to like actually put some speech bubbles and kind of play with that kind of thing. And so I found out that Illustrator is the place to be if you are going to be doing that kind of stuff. And like, um, there's like a couple of different reasons, I guess, to use Illustrator for when you do your lettering. Number one is it like because the vector thing, it keeps like it puts it on a separate layer and there's there's like a difference on, in the actual literal font. So like the fonts themselves and the bubbles end up being vector while the art itself is underneath and it kind of creates a like it re removes the noise, I guess, is like a word that people use a lot for like the fonts above. Like if you put them in Photoshop and you flatten your files with them on it, I guess it can cause a little bit of just like it can become part of the art. And, get, and if, it, if you lose a little bit of quality, you'll lose it in your letters as well. Okay. So that's something that I've kind of learned and kind of been messing with. So, um, so yeah, so I've been getting better at Illustrator and Illustrator is like made for just like building shapes and stuff too. So it's like, I grab the pen tool and I, and I, you know, I make a perfect little circle, grab the pen tool, give it a little tail. And then if I, and I don't like my speech bubbles to be perfect. So then I just like grab the warp tool and kind of make the edges look a little shaky. And it's kind of like, I'm you kind of like fake the edges of being hand drawn to get a little more of that feel into it. And then you're done. And then you can like, once you've made one or two good bubbles too, like you can, you can do some copying and pasting and just like readjusting as you go. So that's been fun. Uh, just like learning a new process to kind of mix into my process. And then um, just continuity is just a thing. Like I'm just like, I don't know how many word bubbles or narrations I plan to have on one page that I realize actually fit better in a later page and like, you know, placeholder in between and just, it feels really good. It's um, there's this thing about when I write that there's just this like perfect mix of, like I like to get a little bit deep and thoughtful with my writing, but at the same time, I try not to be like super cheesy. And there's a fine line between just like cheesy writing and cool, like thought provoking writing, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of been my biggest struggle, honestly, is just like making sure that I'm, I'm staying in that realm of thought provoking and fun and like exciting and adventurous sci-fi and not just like over the top cheesy. It's like, you want to like build this world and you want to like have like all these cool special things that are like, Oh, only these things are in my, you know, it's like the things you remember of sci-fi are like, it's star Wars and it's the X wing and the death star, you know, it's like all these like fun things that you mm -hmm. are a part of that world. But like, those are secondary to a really good story, you know, and sometimes you can get caught up in like making up all these fake names and words and stuff for the stuff that happens in your universe. And, and forget that it, it really it really doesn't even matter what you call the thing. You got to make sure you have like a so solid characters first and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Make sure you have enough substance and not just a flair. Yeah, exactly. So as an artist, flair is our thing. So it's easy to get caught up in the flair and then have to take a step back and make sure that there's substance. So that has been my challenge just this whole month with like, I, I'm, super happy with the pages and I get them in and then I'm, I start to go back to what I wrote earlier this year. That's a big thing too. I'll go back to the stuff I wrote earlier this year when I had like planned to do all this kind of stuff. And a lot of it's like, I've changed a lot of it. That's, that's kind of what I like about being the artist and the writer too. That's like one of those things of just like, um, like sometimes you realize like, Oh, that was a cool idea back then. If I would have sent this script off to somebody, I would have been locked into that thing. But now that I'm able to like, be the editor and the everything i'm able to be like like make, be able to make the decision to realize like this thing i was gonna make happen actually fits better into a later book even like it shouldn't even fit in book one it should fit in book two stuff like that has happened throughout the process of just drawing and writing and stuff like that so it's been a good it's been a good couple of weeks and i think uh wh when did we do the show last week i think it was thursday right um uh, was it tuesday tuesday i think Might have yeah, been tuesday, tuesday, so yeah tuesday yeah, so that's been my, uh, since the last time we talked, just trying to get kind of myself in a good place. And it's like, um, I, I did my live ink show on Wednesday about like staying with a big project and how not to burn out on it and stuff like that. And one of the big things I talked about was two projects at once, which has been like a thing that's actually really helped me lately is having like this thing I, I've been doing with my 30 minute sketches that I post in between all my pages and stuff. Like 
that's been awesome. And like, I've even actually gotten myself involved in a couple other fun little, like just art things on like little um, groups that I'm involved in and stuff that are just like fun on the side that I'm not even like, I'm not even really necessarily trying to promote it. It's just like what I'm doing to keep myself loving my art as I'm also burning the oil of a giant project that could make me hate my life. So yeah, <laughs> that's, been, that's been the progress so far. So how about you, man? Well, um, I like everything you just said. It's all great. I actually need to do a little bit of binge watching on um, your live ink things because I've uh, caught in bits and pieces of both. Uh, but I've been catching up on a couple different podcasts. and uh, But I really do enjoy those, man. And I've been enjoying seeing the art that comes from there as well. But, uh, yeah, so progress. Since Hold on one second. I was gonna since I since you kind of went off in your, on the tangent. Let me uh, we got in the chat. It looks like it's going a little off here. Let me make sure we're not ignoring anything. Yeah. What you got? Oh yeah. So um, Ace said he was thinking about some of the narration. I think from your story since you were talking that he'd like to ask you about. If you feel comfortable, Ace, ask away. Um, and then he also said, oh, cause you were talking about wanting to make sure you kept enough substance in it. And he has the best writing advice I've heard. And he says, just make sure that the way you write makes me want to keep reading. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ace. We do appreciate it. Oh man, I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This Throw touchdowns. A, Four points. Is- He's really good at throwing in inside jokes into um, into situations where not everyone understands what's happening. There was this uh, this quote on this board of this guy, one of the last conventions we went to, and his quote said, there's something about the way he writes that makes me want to keep reading. And we were like, yeah, yeah, that's it's definitely the goal. <laughs> that's a good thing to have. Yeah, but it was just like a really funny, like, it was one of those, like, there was no, no, it wasn't quoted by anyone saying it. And we were like, did he make that up? And like, that's like a good example of the, like, being careful not to be too cheesy. Like, sometimes things you say in your head, you're like, I'm a genius. And you say them out loud and you're like, oh, I should have kept that to myself. People are like, really? (laughs) (laughs) All right, go ahead, man. Give us your progress. Um, So if you check it out yesterday... Uh, I put up episode one of a new YouTube uh, show that I started called Drawing Inspiration. Um, It's the first one, so you iron out some things to get it going and everything. But overall, I was pretty excited about it, and I'm excited about the premise of it. I hope uh, I'm definitely going to be making some more of them. And now that I kind of have the intro film and all that, the little stop motion part of it and and some of those things, I think it'll go a lot quicker in the future. Um, yeah. Just once again, something that we've talked about. One of the problems from the past with this show is it's also a season where like, I'm working a ton right now. So we're not going out and exploring a whole bunch and doing a whole lot of things. Which we do a little bit more when we're not working so intensely. But So once I get kind of uh, some footage built up for the next one, uh, it'll be a little bit easier. But I hope it catches on. It was an idea of a way for me to explore my new surroundings and everything, but also help um, other artists uh, or writers or whoever fill their creative bank account. And if any of you, um, which I'm sure a lot of you have followed Jake Parker, he's the one that talked about the creative bank account being something where you're putting in the time at the desk or at the drawing board or wherever is great. And you got to put in a lot of time doing that, but you also have to pick yourself up and go out in the world and experience it and see stuff. So you know what it looks like when someone cracks up at a joke or what it looks like when a bird's about to take off or a cityscape or whatever, um, more than just seeing it, you know, kind of on Pinterest, which is awful help, also helpful sometimes. Um, but anyway, so it's fun for me to go out and experience the world. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of bring that to an audience and then kind of show where there's different ways from that footage to be able to work on things um, uh, for your sketchbooks that you need to be working on, uh, that I need to be working on. So I share a little bit from my sketchbook from each show, and hopefully it's something that can maybe build up a little bit and people might uh, find it useful. And I'd love to get it as a place for other people to kind of share their artwork too and create a little social scene out of it. But anyway, issue one of that is up. Uh, Thanks Ace. I like to call it issue one. You got oh, is that what I, 
I should call it issue one, but yeah, episode one. Um, Ace said it was uh, the music was cool in it. I appreciate that. It was the band that I did my comic for, uh, Isabel Crane. Um, I used some of their music for it, and my comic on Etsy for sale was commissioned by them. So I love their old timey touch. Um, works out pretty good. But thanks for watching. But I anyway. Have I haven't actually gotten a chance to get in. I like started to like listen to it and I liked, I loved the intro. It was awesome. And then I had to run off and do life, but yeah, I'm actually really excited. I have it on my list of stuff I draw tomorrow morning to listen to. So I totally excited. understand. And like I said, hopefully it's something where you're, you know, not even like right away, but maybe, you know, you get an idea of something fun to draw from it. I even thought like one part I pan across and show I'm filming kind of down on a dock and I'm not just trying to show this is this, landmark and this is that landmark but just what it's like being a comic artist you know looking around at new stuff and what you tend to look at and sometimes it's not just look out at the boats but it's like ooh, look underneath the dock this is kind of creepy and i thought it'd be fun to even like take little scenes like that to like add our characters into you know um right because i enjoy doing the character thing a lot but even like this thing i'm working on now they tend to be floating in space and i kind of work out the scene afterwards but um, anyway, yeah, no worries. Uh, whenever you get a chance to check it out, um, let me know what you think. Um, at some point, um, yeah, if you do a drawing from it, we'll post it. And I actually thought like a way to kind of help promote it because one of the problems I'll just jump right into um, is like you make this thing, you spend a lot of time on it, then you put it up, and then you sort of just sit back, and then it sort of fizzles, and you move on to the next thing. Um, which to a certain degree makes sense. You've got to kind of always be working on the next thing. But I thought there's no reason why I can't still once in a while go back to the episode that I've already done, um, use it as a way to draw, like draw like another picture from it, then post that to my Instagram account and be like, this was a drawing I did from my episode one. Check it out and like space it out over the time it's released to the time. You know, as a way to kind of keep eyes on it and Oh maybe yeah. Someone didn't get a chance to look at it the first time and life moves on. They're like, Oh yeah, maybe I should check that out. So I thought that maybe would be a way to uh, kind of keep that going. But um, no, I know what you're saying, man. that's oh. like I feel like that's the artist's ultimate sort of like um I don't know what the word for that is, but like just that I you, you spend it's like the progress and process through the thing takes so much time and then it's done and then you post it and you get like your 24 hours of people being like, cool. And then it's over and you're like, but that took me like a month to get done. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, it really is. I think it, I don't know. Like sometimes you want to be like, Hey guys, just to let you know, I think this is a cool one. I think some people might enjoy this. Yeah. Um, hop on please. <laughs> 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 so, but, you know, make a few, you know, and maybe that helps make it a little bit more legit as well, you know, get yeah. a few up there that people can, can watch and everything. But, uh, it sure was a lot of fun to make. And I think no matter what, I'm going to keep doing it because, uh, I think it's a fun idea. It's fun for me to make. And so, you know, there you go. <laughs> um, and then besides that, I started doing a couple very rough thumbnails on the, uh, comic of mythical creatures for that anthology that I'm working on. It's just a four page short comic. Um, and then today kind of started working on um, the main human character, I guess, which is kind of the host of the um, not travel show. I keep wanting to say that, but of kind of a nature show, but that's this guy right here. I haven't really come up with a name for him yet. Just kind of a rough sketch that now I'm kind of having some fun <laughs> pens on tonight, but I'm really enjoying that character so far already. Thank you. I appreciate that. He's He's been fun to draw already. He's got some sass for sure, but I don't know if he's going to make it through this uh, through this four pages. Oh, no. Creatures. I know, man. I'm just not sure. They put their lives on the line, you know. Who Who are they? These crazy folks that, like, put their heads in the lion's mouth to be like, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, he he's very Steve Irwin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I'm not even making fun, dude. I think that guy was awesome. Like, I, I was yeah. I, for inspiration stuff. I was looking through a whole bunch of different um, Jacques Cousteau. You know, he's got kind of that hat and Jack Hanna and all these different people, and they all have a little bit of a swagger. I you know, have like the kind of hat that they wear, the the tiny shorts that are just so tight. <laughs> <laughs> That's super. <laughs> 
But uh, so I thought he had to have that, but the mustache was like a little bit of a, you know, fantastic flavor on it sort of a thing. I was thinking about calling it, uh, what was it? Fantastic Geographic. Like kind of a, yeah, that style of a show, but kind of a fantastic beast sort of a thing, I guess. Honestly, it's out right now. So um, I guess it is kind of that sort of, not that tale at all, but just an animal lover. But as far as fantastic um, creatures goes. That's cool. That's very in your realm too. Of just like, I feel like you love the um, mad scientist, like guy who explores the thing that he shouldn't like thing. You do a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. Just make, I, I, like I think... your monsters eat and stuff like that too. It's just very like, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Exploring the, un the unknown and kind of like a fun and playful way. Well, and I think those are always, I don't know, I guess that's uh, what like a Harry Potter story is, is it takes somebody who's just like you and me and puts right. them in this crazy world so that we can identify. I think that's why like uh, Robin, Batman and Robin, I always love that character because I think that's very much what that does is it kind of is like, oh, okay, so I could hang out with Batman. Right. I lost like 40 pounds and can jump off the side of buildings with rope, but... <laughs> You know, I mean, that's, a, that's a low point of entry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I'm pretty excited about this one and it's fun. Uh, really starting to get some stuff down on paper now, but the thumbnails are, you know, um, preliminary, but getting that going. Cause I think January 1st, which will go good um, with kind of you wanting to start off with a bang. That's like when like day one of a hundred days starts off with making this comic Oh, awesome. Um, I think I'm, I don't know exactly to what capacity. Um, like I'm definitely going to do like the hundred days of making comics to do it yeah. and everything. I don't know if I'll do the straight daily videos. I won't do daily videos on YouTube cause I don't want to clog it. Cause honestly we have like a lot of cool content going right now. Um, but probably like little daily catch ups or every other day type thing, um, on Instagram and everything. So, uh, yeah, now I'm just kind of rambling. Yeah, that's that that was my progress from last time. Now you're good, man. Yeah, which had the video honestly took like a lot of extra stuff that I wasn't um, aware. You know, just little voiceover things and knowing what to say during this pause and how much music to use here and everything. But uh, it was a lot of fun. But anywho, how about you for uh, problems? I think we both kind of talked about a couple of things a little bit, but yeah. Um, I would put like the first day of me getting into Illustrator and, and trying to make something of that was definitely a bit of a, I would, I would call it a prop. Like I was just frustrated and luckily I had Rao and to like run across every once in a while and be like, what, why isn't this stupid tool working? Like <laughs> this, yeah. this, uh, you know, this random <laughs> tutorial I said, said I could should be able to just push this button and type inside this space. And it's telling me, you know, compound path, not found or something stupid like that. And I'm like, <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> PC low letter. What the yeah. does PC low letter mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like, are you just making crap up now just to make me want to punch the computer? Am I being punked? Yeah. Right. There's a camera there. There's a camera there. And there's a camera there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's my current bad joke that I like to make. That was a good one. If I, uh, I mess with my students and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, I'm just messing around. There's the camera there and there's the camera there and you're, you're on my prank show. And they're like, oh my God, Fleming. <laughs> Pretty much. But anyway, so yeah, uh, learning a new program. It's not new. I mean, I've, I've used Illustrator before. I've done like random logo stuff, but like shape building and that kind of stuff. Like never, never like messing with the tools that I was messing with really. I've never really done like straight up just like typing text things in Illustrator before. So that was a bit of a bit of a fun challenge for me to kind of mess with. What font are you using? Um, I found a couple of different fonts. Um, I basically found a nice little arrangement of just free, like they're nice, like they're actually. I almost paid for some fonts, honestly. There, but um, in when you subscribe to Adobe now, we inside the like little thing, there are like font packs that you can actually download that are like just free licenses as a part of like having your Adobe subscription and there's actually some really good ones. So 
I snagged a few different random things off there. And there's a website I use called dafont.com that also has like awesome, like you can search by like free licenses and you can, or by like cheap or, you know, like commercial or like for pre for personal use only. And like, all that, like you can kind of mess with the filters until you get something you need. So Rad. A, for just a moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying I, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting kind of a cold, so I just did a really gross thing with my nose. I was just saying sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. Um, I forgive you. Uh, what I was going to say is since we're talking about like where to find some quality fonts that are maybe not your uh, ones that you like shouldn't use um, and everything, right. but unique but free. Uh, Scott Circlin, and you might look into this too, David. I don't know if you saw it. I know you know him. Um, uh, Scott Circlin, S-E-R-K-L-A-N-D the creator of Cirque Works. So search either of those two things on social media, especially here on YouTube. He's got a great YouTube channel with a ton of content. He's also on the Art Casters, which is a, um, an art uh, show um, that I've been listening to for a long time with some great people and topics on it. Um, but he really is kind of beefing up his email list. And to do that, he released a comic uh, creator pack, digital pack that has all kinds of templates and um, a lot of really good info and just different stuff to like really use. One of the things um, is he's got several, I think, fonts on there um, that he made um, that are quality fonts because he's good at okay. that. That are free that, you, you know, you sign up for the email list and you get the digital pack. It's really what all you get on it is like, kind of pretty amazing. Um, and totally worth it for just signing up for an email, which you should get anyway, because he has a lot of cool content on social media. Um, like I said, a lot of really cool, especially here on YouTube. But like I said, search CircWorks, um, Scott Circland, sign up for that email list and download it. And all of a sudden, you've got some pretty unique fonts that not everyone's going to have that are still quality handmade fonts that are like done properly and everything. So. Anyway, just want to give a plug for that guy because that's an awesome deal. Yeah, that's awesome. So anyway, sorry. You were still talking about then dealing with the struggles of Illustrator and such and your trials and tribulations for the week. Yeah, I mean, so that that was just one of them, just that. And then um, spilling water all over one of my pages when we did our show last week, right? So Yeah, how long did that take to kind of uh, get... It didn't take me – like I – there's so I don't know why. So I always hear people talking about like uh, they ink they they pencil and then they ink over a light box. You know they they don't ink directly onto the pencils and like this and that and all kinds of stuff. And I, I I like I need to be on the page. Like I need one piece of paper and I'm inking on it. And I'm I'm doing everything on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like there's just a disconnect when I'm staring at this light and trying to like like I get lost in like like what I, like what I'm doing right now where I'm just kind of making a mess out of this, you know? Like I can't do that when I'm trying to just trace back over something that I've already drawn. Like I I can't get myself in, in the zone of being playful and like like you know, like and I've even this me doing these 30 minute sketches that I've been doing has been actually putting me in like a super good place with um like being confident about like being sloppy but still being like good, like good with my inks if that makes sense. Like I'm yeah. learning to be looser with my pencils and that my inks make more of my choices yeah and when i try to do that on a light box i feel like i'm just getting the zone where i'm just like like stiff wristed like just trying to find my lines you know like actually tracing and not inking yeah exactly so i i just did a quick trace over like i literally just found my proportions basically i like laid it over and was like all right the, the robot's head starts there the robot's head ends there like i, I did a cloth you know like and then, and then i took it off the light box and i basically ended up redrawing it but it was like I, I my layout I was at least able to save so I do feel like that in itself though once you I've had a similar thing happen where I've had to do exactly what you just described and then the next time it happened I like knew all of that so I just did a much looser pencil to get the proportions and then went back and then like looking at the one was able to draw it again and even kind of found ways to improve and everything and it went a lot faster so I feel like that is still like a, a good way to use it. Like at first I was like spent money on this stupid light box. I can't even use it. But like when I kind of learned to use it in that fashion, it still seemed to like really help the process when I had to redo something the next time. Right. Anywho. No, that's, that's like a big, like I've used my light box a lot to salvage things or to like, 
Like literally just like, oh, this thing I drew a long time ago is bad, but like this proportion is really nice. And like, I just kind of steal it or something, you know, like things like that. I use my lightbox a lot of time to like do some quick shortcuts, but yeah, there's just something about, I think it's just the more like, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't want to say this in like a weird, like I'm so much better at drawing, but like when you get better at drawing, you realize that they're like, like I can redraw a thing if I mess up. I, I mean, I, I can find the lines again, or and I, I can I can work it out and I can figure it out. Like, I feel like when you're newer at drawing, everything is precious, and you're like, everything is your final drawing and has to be amazing and the best. And so you you get real real tic tacky about everything, you know. For sure. Like I, I would be like, you know, I, there's no way I can redraw this. This is obviously the best I can do on this. And if right. I try to recapture that magic it'll slip through my fingers but so I, I was a little okay with the whole thing you know it was just like getting myself when i got right to the point of being like this is how far i used to be and i had been drawing for another couple hours you know yeah i was like oh that's kind of lame i spent two hours of my day getting back to where i used to be like <laughs> yeah but, but that was that was my only that again i'll take no, it I, you know, i'm not blaming you i was an idiot like i'm not that was definitely all my fault i just, I always do that. I lay out all of the, like the drinks and waters and, th and coffees that I'm going to drink. And then I slap my giant drawing board down and there's been so many times I've almost knocked it over. So it was just about time it happened. <laughs> you were due, huh? Yeah. So, so anyways, like I really honestly, like in terms of problems, it's just <laughs> the usual time management and having to work backwards a little bit and the flow of, okay. Like I spent all last week on the computer which is awesome because I'm almost up to 11 finished pages of a, you know, my 36, 40 page thing that I have going on here. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's awesome. Cause I, I mean, I, a quarter of the way there basically kind of thing. And that's cool. But you know, getting back and forth from computer to hand and computer to hand and computer to hand is like a problem I have where like, okay, now it's time to, draw like now it's time to get out the bristol and draw but i'm like but i'm in computer mode and so then i feel a little a little like i don't know if the word rusty it, like you know and then i'm like oh right this is what it feels like to be on paper again like like that kind of thing like keeping in the flow of when i have to jump like i take it and i finish it and i ink it and then i scan it and then it's in photoshop and i clean it up and i take it in photoshop i put it in illustrator and then you know what i mean yeah i'm jumping but around it seems like oh, even it seems like even kind of why you as you're describing that, that that in itself is like a good reason that you are doing that. Right. Um, if you're jumping back and forth quickly a lot, going from page to page, and it can feel kind of rusty when you go from one to the other, imagine like what I do, where you do like all of your pages, and then you scan all of your pages, and then you do the digital work. Well, then by the time I do all of that stuff again, I'm like, wait, how did I do this? So... Right, might, yeah, uh, that, might feel uh, strange or herky jerky now, but I imagine it's only going to get kind of more comfortable. Yeah, and working like and on multiple things like that is definitely also super helpful because I'm not burning myself out on things. But um, give me one second. I just realized I didn't plug my computer in. I need to like run and grab my charger cord before it dies. Yeah, no problem. I'll just sit here in silence and awkwardness. No, I'm kidding. Um, so the problems that I encountered, um, I kind of mentioned before when I was making the show, much like making a comic, there's a whole lot of stuff that uh, once you realize you've got the bare bones of it, you realize that there's all these other things you have to do to fill it in so that the time you put in to get it thus far pans out when you present it to people. So I had to do a lot of extra little things here and there and not happy with the way everything turned out, but you have to start somewhere and it's still, even though I do it here all the time and Ronnie, I know you can relate. It's not super easy all the time to be the host and be like, Hey everybody, you should listen to me. Cause what I'm saying is really important and, you know, trying to make sure that what you say is important and you're not just blabbering, but trying to make sure that, um, you know, that you script it out so you know what to say and, but not sound too rigid and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So the self-consciousness of that was an interesting one, even though I've kind of been doing this, that was a little bit more something where it's kind of a rock solid thing that, you know, hopefully people will go to check out. 
besides that, like David said, it's always just time fitting everything in. I really want to have, by January 1st, well, before, honestly, this comic completely thumbnailed out, which I, I think is totally possible. Not a big deal, this four-page guy. Um, but I also want to have my October comic. Um, for the most part, I keep backing off a little bit as I'm talking about it, but no, I, I'd like for that to be thumbnailed as well because I don't want the 100 days to completely fill up with just making that four-page comic. I think I've made a couple comics now, so and, and once I have it thumbnailed out, I think I have a good enough flow that I could make those four pages in hopefully a lot less than 100 days and be able to just move right into October because I want to, I've got to, I need to have him ready to go by um, uh, fall time next year, September, hopefully. Like I want to do a Kickstarter and, and rock it. So I really need to kind of prepare as far as that. And with that, with all these ideas, I'm not getting in as much study time as I was hoping to, which is um, – ha 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 going back to the drawing board and spending a little bit more time just like on learning the craft and not just the doing um, we often talk about learn by doing which is good and that's a way to jump in so you're not putting it off for too long but i need to spend a little bit more time as, as like an actual student and really like work on proportion and work on shading and light and color and all of those things that you do work on while you're working on a project, but on a project, if you stop too much over all those little things, you'll never get it done. There's a certain amount of, I'm this good at this point, finish it through to get it done, and then get better for the next thing. Ronnie says, yes, I agree. Trying to promote, but not cram them with buy my book now. Yeah, you got to kind of spread that out over a little bit of time, huh? You've got to. I hope that's all going well for you, Ronnie. Um, and yeah, just remember, I don't think, I don't know, remember how like you, when you watch uh, Amazon or something and you get the commercials, it's like the same three commercials. They don't really worry that they're like over advertising too much. So obviously we don't want to be jerks as artists to people. We don't want to have the same mentality as like big business folks and everything. But I think we have to remember when you're promoting a thing that you made that it's not just like we talked about at the beginning of the show, you don't just put it out in the world and go, Hey, it's here for you. Um, and that's it. And then, you know, I, I don't want to bother you guys. So I'll just tell you about it this one time. And then hopefully, you know, everyone will just find it and discover how awesome it is. You really do have to kind of, uh, promote your stuff and keep promoting it and keep pretending that it's fresh and new, even if you've been working on it for six years and it's finally done, you want to move on to the next thing. You still have to like, Put the time in to promote that thing. Are yeah. you back, David? You are. Yeah, I've been back. You just you were on a roll, so I was just letting you do your thing. Sorry, man. <laughs> I was just like speaking in tongues. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> yeah, you were actually literally just going. Nah, 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 nah. Like, right, whatever, <laughs> really, it all sounded really good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a really good point, though. It's like I, I think. I think too often as an artist, we think don't be like business, but really when it comes down to it, like you are a business as an artist and you, and you do, there's a, I think there's a fine line between that, between like being in everyone's face all the time and promote, but, and then being like confident to promote yourself. Amen to that. So um, where are we at? I think we're at plans. Plans, all right. About our problems enough. I think so too. I don't want to know plans by the next time we talk. Later. What? <laughs> kidding. You whine too much. I don't know. You want some cheese with that wine? I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I apologize, public. In, I, I apologize in public, live on air. <laughs> So, what are your plans by the next time we talk? Um, so, week from today, more or less, or Sunday, if we, you know, eventually get back on schedule. My plan would be, I think my plan would be um, draft one of all the full PD. Like, it's all ready to roll. Like, other eyes have seen it, and I've gotten, 
I'm back. Like I've got, I've sent it out. People have seen it. I've done a little bit of editing and I'm finally, maybe I'm like in the final drafting stage of just making sure everything looks nice and then sending it off to my, uh, I don't know what you'd call that. I have, I have able, I was able, I've got a friend whose um, husband is like, basically does like magazine layout, like that kind of stuff for a living. So he is offered to like, basically I get all the files ready and I'll send them to him and he will in design, just like slap them together and, and build these like annoying parts of the process for me. That's pretty rad. Yeah. I cannot, I don't even like, I can't find a way to thank him enough for it. Like he, he's like super chill about it, but I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like knowing that, as soon as these files are ready, you will just like, like literally he was like, it'll take me like 10 minutes and I'll have a PDF ready for you. And I'm like, seriously. And he's like, yeah, like, like that's it. Like, like, I'm like, I would probably watch a video for an hour and then, and then stay up super late and still, it still sucks. So you mean to like format the pages so that they're ready for print? Yeah. And just, at, yeah, that. And for like, whenever I want to like have the PDF ready to be like digitally read, like, He'll like put them in and make sure the spreads are correct and the everything, all that kind of stuff. That's cool. That that digital part of it probably adds something to it, but that was like a really big worry of mine because uh, the first time I printed um, a comic book, I kind of just did a small run at Kinko's and somebody came in and they're like, "Here, let me help you format that to kind of really save you some hassle because you don't know what you're doing, and usually the people at Kinko's don't know what they're doing." Right. So, yeah, that when I did the second one, I was all worried about that process again. But by the time I got around to searching, um, oh, like who I was going to print through, it was as easy as just labeling all of your individual files with page one, page two, page three, and like they did all of that. Right. There was no formatting that I had to do. Um, but with the whole digital aspect of it, that's probably a little bit different. Yeah, just generally knowing that I have a basically like professional at the thing though on my side for when I'm like, just, Hey, by the way, I'm adding my bleeds to my pay, you know, like this is and you know, just, just general questions and stuff. I, I'm just like super thankful to have someone I can like pick the brain of. <coughs> There's just so much more than there should be into like these kinds of things, which I guess, I don't know then there should be as a good comment, but you know what I mean? Like, you don't realize until you really get into these kinds of projects, like how many layers they really have. Absolutely. We actually, why you left us, that's how I got on my tirade. I don't know how I got from point A to point B, but just the problems I was talking about is that, that when you're doing a project and not just a drawing, um, you really kind of figure out how much really goes into all this stuff. All oh, right, right more than just posting it on Instagram when you're done with it. and Exactly, which I guess is, you know, man, we, we bring them up every time, but Jake Parker and Three Point Perspective, they talk about how um, you have to get a project to the point of shipping and you got to, you know, make a product, not a project. And, I mean, this is why I think one of the reasons why is when you do this stuff, um, you know, you, you can make a kid's book by just drawing all the pages and being like, cool, huh? But if you want to print it and actually have it bound and, you know, figure out all that other process, there's a lot more to it than just than just to doing it. Yeah. So make stuff, share it with people, print it, sell it, all that good stuff. No, yeah, I definitely agree with that 100%. That uh, what's that? There's an episode of that. What is it? Um, ship happens or something. I think yeah. it is one. Of the, I think it's one of the best for anyone who's is doing, has been doing, or plans to be doing, like the, this kind of stuff. It's probably one of the best episodes I've listened to of a podcast in a long time. It's just, I think he he talks about he talked about one thing that was like um having three lives for your thing or something like that. I think is one of the things that he talked about. Mm-hmm. And that stuck with me a lot because it's like super real as like a, as a artist who is trying to put themselves out there using like social media and stuff, you kind of have to think about yourself in terms of like your, the content you have and keeping, like you have to be so consistent. Like you, you don't post for a week and someone might think your page is dead and stop following you. You know, it's like, there's, it's pretty brutal to like stay up with these kinds of things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he talked about how like, like right now I'm, I'm, kind of doing my roughs here, right? So I'll take a picture of this at that point and I'll have a 
I'll have a nice content to post in terms of just like me roughing out a little doodle and then I'll do some inks and I'll post that and I'll do my screen tones and I'll post that. And then I'll, after that, I'll have an original, which I'll sell. And then after that, I will also color it and I'll make a print, which I'll sell. And then, you know, and I'll, then I will also have this piece to use to promote like my, my shop or something. And so I've made like out of one work of art, I've made three things that can help promote me further. And I just like that. It's just like, everything I do now, I try to think about it in those terms of like, how, how I, I, do I, can I get three uses out of this thing that I'm spending my time? And I love that. Yeah, that really made a big impression on me too. I think to the point where even with um, drawing inspiration, the new show I'm doing, um, it's like, how can I even let the rest of my life contribute towards this? You know? Yeah. yeah I want to spend time going out and exploring, but how is that through a filter where I can get inspired? Uh, to make a drawing, to make a video, to make a, you know, whole thing. Yeah, that, that was some, that whole, you know, three lives of something um, rung true with me quite a bit as well. Cool. Uh, did you do your problems? I did. I, for some reason, was thinking that I was waiting on you to get started on that. No, I think I did that. You did your plans, right? Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, plans. It's your oh, turn yeah. again. Yeah, that's so, my man. I'm done. Um, yeah, okay. No worries. So my plans are kind of still what they have been. It's always, I think I kind of, not bite off more than I can chew, but I'm always like, I will have this story thumbnailed by next time. I'm like, okay, so there's been a little extra going on. <laughs> but uh, that I really want to have by the next time we talk at this point with everything else kind of put to bed with the travel show thing. Um, I want to have my four-page story. Got my character. I've got my theme. I've got, I've got most everything I need. Um, so by the next time we talk, I want to be able to say, these are my thumbnails. Um, as far as that goes in the sketchbook. Oh, I think I am going to try to aim for doing another, uh, drawing from my YouTube show, drawing inspiration okay. from that first episode. So that, um, you know, after a week goes by, cause I'm not going to be able to, excuse me, I'm sorry, not be able to make one like every week, especially here at the beginning. Right. Um, and I think there is something where there's something possible out of it. And that I was trying for is to make it worth someone's while to even possibly view it more than once. Um, there's potentially like all kinds of different images that I think would work great for um, practicing your sketchbook or just taking that as inspiration to draw a spaceship that kind of has a aquatic look to it, you know? Yeah. But anyway, um, if I can kind of help demonstrate that even by showing, yeah, this is yet another one. And then people go, well, that's a curious image. Where did that come from again? And help drive the audience towards it, which I think is important. Um, so maybe try to get another one of those going along with some more just fun drawings in my sketchbook. Love it. Um, so yeah, and uh, this guy here is going to be the new uh, host for that show. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> For the four-page comic guy, I need to come up with a name for this guy. So if uh, any of you creative folks out there in the uh, chat have any ideas, let me know. Um, Ronnie said that he's joining the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. That's awesome, man. Um, and he says that will help even more, referring to the idea that you have to, not just when you release the book, but as it goes on, you really have to drive your audience to it, no matter what project you're doing. So that will definitely help, man, having a, being a part of that for sure. And that would be a great video as well, as you do kind of get involved with that, of um, what you did to be able to join it and how you joined it and what it's like to meet up with some of those people. So um, um, uh, fun thing to... Uh, help add to your YouTube channel. Cause I know you've just got that going and everything. So I'd love to hear more about that for sure. Um, that's, that's the check, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, man. I feel like we're, we're teetering off a little bit. I feel like, so I, I think that might be most of what we got to talk about tonight. I hear. You. Yeah. The topic tonight was, I think just really us catching us and taking a breath. Last week we got to have Ronnie, uh, Gunter on who we're talking about. Um, to promote uh, Sagas of Starsville, which uh, you should listen to that. It was a fun episode last week with Ronnie. Um, a lot of good info, and there's also links to um, his work. 
uh, and where you can buy that book. So check that out. And uh, yeah, but with that, um, we didn't get a chance to really catch up as much and chat with each other as much as we do. So that's what we're aiming for this time, just to say, hey, and I've heard enough from him. So <laughs> wait for me. <laughs> yeah, you. I'm done with you. Cool. Well, let's do the plugs then. If we can control the hands and make them go places, where will we go? All right. If I could control your fingers, I would tell you um, to go right here on our YouTube channel um, to the video that I posted from yesterday called Drawing Inspiration. I'd love to see your drawings from it, your thoughts about it. Um, if parts were like, what are you talking about here? I'd love to see more of this. Just so you know, David, just a little teaser for you to oh, help yeah. you want to watch it. I'm just going to say this. Slow motion skateboard trick. Oh, my gosh. What it's it? got it all. I'm telling you, man. You guys got to check out this show. Can I spell it with an X? Um, you can spell anything with an X. Scott. Oh, my goodness. Scott. Scott. S-X-O-T-T. That's how I spell my name from now on. Scott. <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing. I should stop talking. Um, but yeah, please check that out. I'm proud of it. It's called Drawing Inspiration. Um, and then when you're not here on the YouTube channel, head over to Instagram, where if you click on the link in bio, it will take you to that YouTube episode. Uh, but my uh, Instagram handle is Mr. Green Draws, Mr. Green Draws, and that's where you'll find me most active. So, how about you, David? Yeah, uh, Instagram at Art of Mr. Fleming, and that's one M F L E M I N G, and then um, Mr. David Fleming on Facebook and beyond. And beyond, jeez, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a <laughs> that's a good a time as any. <laughs> oh, we're such dorks. All right, till next time, everybody. All right, pieces.